Hello there, it's Shane again, uh, giving a quick go lecture for my YouTube channel. This one I wanted to cover just some basic in-game concepts and counting. Uh, this is directed towards Q players, but um, especially high Q players, but even those approaching Don seem to sometimes forget the value of moves or the correct order in in-game, so I think this will be a useful lecture even for those players all the way up to 2 and 3 Q. Often even in quicker games or when you're pressed by time in the end game, we kind of stop counting as accurately. So here um, I laid out three moves, A, B, and C, black to move. They're all diagonal moves, uh, but there's some differences between them. So I proposed four questions. What's the value of the move at A? the value of move at B, the value of move at C, and the question at D is, if white ignores that diagonal move, what is the value of jumping in at D, and what is the result? So I'll take a 10 seconds so that you can digest the questions here. We're also assuming the center of the board is completed and filled. These are just end game problems. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what happens. So if black plays here and white responds and black gives the honey on the first line, and white returns with Atari, black fills, and white connects. So this sequence is a sente sequence, meaning that black played the first move of the sequence, and it's black's move after the sequence is done. So black would have the privilege of playing somewhere else on the board. So to count the territory, we're going to say it's four points for white along the second line, and three points for black. I'm just counting up to the end line. I'm not counting the 018 point because uh, later in the game, white is almost always going to have the privilege of playing that. So white would play there, black would have to fill at 018, or fill one point over at N18, and all the same really right now. So um, black would rarely ever get that chance to play that because that would be one point, and white wouldn't have to respond. So to take one point in Gote would be really extremely small, one of the smallest moves. So that would be played at the very last two or three moves of the game if that were still on the board. However, white, you know, maybe when there's eight or ten moves left in the game or when there's a co-fight happening, white would get to play that move and threaten to capture three stones. So uh, it's really going to be Wright's privilege to play at A. So we don't count that 018 point. So here we have four points for white, three points for black. Now let's go back and let's assume, sorry, let's assume that white gets to play this move. If black answers, now we have seven points for white, and up to the end line, on the second line, we have zero points for black. So compared to the previous example, that's four for white, three for black in the previous, seven for white, zero for black. So each person had a difference of three points, black losing three or gaining three, white losing three or gaining three. So three each makes a total value of six. So this is a total of six points. For this move. We call this six points in sente because both sequence that I showed whoever played there first in sente. So in summary, if we have to say the value of the A move, going back to the original question, the value of A move would be six points in sente for both players. So we call that double sente. So the value of A is six points in double sente. 
double sente moves are extremely valuable. They're more valuable than just the regular sente move. So what do I mean by a regular sente move? Well, now's a good time to look down at the lower right, at B. If white plays there, we have a similar example of where white would have the same result. It would be six points at B if white gets to play there. However, it would be black six points to defend at B. But if black defends at B, it's not his sente. White doesn't need to respond at any move at B. It doesn't threaten white's territory there. So, white plays here. He's threatening to jump in at the S6. So, of course, black goes and defends. So this is the same type of move, six points. But if black plays here, it seems that it's gote, meaning that white doesn't have to answer. But it's not quite gote. Okay, it's called reverse sente because it takes away one of white's sente moves. So we can uh, often, I'll come back to this, but we'll call double sente moves twice the value of gote moves. And I mean, reverse sente moves, twice the value of gote moves. I'll talk about why that is in just a minute. But if we're looking, S4 is sente for white, but it's not sente for black. It's reverse sente for black. It protects against a white sente. So A is double sente. B is reverse sente for black. Six points. It's the same. It's sente for white, since it's reverse sente for black. C, on the other hand, is gote for both players. So, this is the same as the P18 move in terms of points. So, we also call this six points, but white is not going to respond. So, this is six points in gote. Gote meaning you play there first and the sequence ends with you playing there last. So therefore you lose the initiative. So gote is a sequence that ends in a loss of initiative. So the gote sequence here um, is very important to note. White's going to play elsewhere and I say this because in double digit Q games just for whatever reason sometimes you'll see 12, 13 cues, they see their opponent play there, and then they go ahead and also play there. And then sometimes even a 15 cue player will also play there. And then the 15 cue will respond by playing there. All these moves are very small. All of them now at this point are only one point, taking one point away from your opponent and protecting one point for yourself. So when that happens, uh, both players are really losing in-game opportunities elsewhere on the board. So this is why I wrote in the box, white should ignore. White will ignore if it's a good player, but white should ignore. So if you're one of those 15 or 16 Q players, make sure to really evaluate if you need to answer things like this in the end game. So this is six points Gote. And this is very different than this, because this is also gote. White is not going to answer. White's going to kind of play elsewhere. But you've taken away one of White's sente sequences. And the key to the end game is to play your double sente sequences, then play your sente sequences, and then evaluate your reverse sente and your gote sequences. Because reverse sente also ends with you losing the initiative. However, reverse sente sequences take away one of your opponent's sente sequences when it's their turn. Therefore, your opponent has to end their line of sente sequences with one less action, so you get sente sooner. So this is why you'll get one extra kind of at-bat, if you will. So this is how we consider reverse sente sequences double the value of just pure gote. So this is a reverse sente. 
this is pure Gote. So we would have to say that taking a reverse sente sequence of three points would be the same value as taking this six point pure Gote mu, if that makes sense. Okay, so the last point that I've asked is what happens when the triangled move at E18 is ignored. So you play this thinking, okay, this E18 move is a sente move worth six points. But my opponent has now ignored it. They've gone on and they played this double sente sequence, okay? Smartly, my opponent ignored it. And now maybe my opponent plays this. And you play that, and the opponent plays this. Okay, now actually you don't have to defend here. Because you're connected through. So assuming there's not a bigger problem, White actually maybe made a mistake here. So... What if you get to jump in? What's the value of that jump in move? And how does that sequence end? So, first we have to evaluate what's the value of if white just defends, if white had not allowed you to jump in. If white had defended there, he would have defended 10 points in Gote. So the defense at d18 if it's white's turn, is defending 10 points in Gote. Conversely, if you get to jump in, now, I marked this here because uh, sometimes you'll see a Q mistake like this. making black fill, but if you do this, actually, now there's some cutting problems. You have to defend yourself. If you don't defend yourself, you can get in trouble here. So, if white plays this move, it does prevent black from making any corner territory, and black will have to fill back his C19 point. However, that sequence ends in Gote. White doesn't want to end Gote, so white plays here, and black plays here, ending in Gote. So, black takes Gote here, he has the three points in the corner, and he later has the privilege of pushing at A and B. So if he pushes at A and B, white has zero points, from the fourth line upward. If we went back to this, from the fourth line upward, white has 10 points. If we go to this, assuming that black gets A and B, white will have zero points from the fourth line upward. So we have black three, white zero, versus white 10, if white had gotten to defend, and black zero. So this is worth about 13 points in Gote. I say about because there is a chance that at some point white will want to defend at B and therefore maybe he, black will push at A, you know, there's a chance that if white gets to defend, white gets 12 points. It only becomes 12 points in Gote. So um, we also have to ask, well, what if black just wants to go ahead and take Sente elsewhere now? to do something like this. And at this point, that would be quite a good move, because what is the value of ending Gote on A18? So ending Gote on A18 would later allow white to play there. Now it's not black. Black doesn't get the privilege of pushing those two points, so white gets at least those two points back, and erases black's three points in the corner. So that's five points lost 
if black doesn't get the a18 move. So black playing a18 earns him five extra points in go trick. So the whole sequence is worth 13 points. If we do this whole sequence, it's worth 13 points. Assuming that we stop it here and white gets a18, then let's subtract 5 from that and make it worth only 8 points. So at this point, should we take the 5 point move at a18, or should we go ahead and take the reverse sente here? Taking the reverse sente, remember, is double the value of a gote move. So the reverse sente here of 6 points is worth an equivalent of 12 point gote move. So now would be time to take that reverse sente sequence. OK. So if it's black's turn from the very beginning, take the double sente move. Then this sequence. Leaving it here for the time being because A18 is five points in Gote, and then taking this six point reverse sente move. That would be how you should order your end game moves. Okay? Leaving the B five point of six points in Gote. Okay, so I guess that clears the beginnings of end game calculation and terms. So always take account of who keeps sente at the end of a sequence. Play your sente sequences first. Do not take gote needlessly. Only take gote if it's at least as doubly as big as preventing an opponent's sente move as another form of preventing gote, what we're calling reverse sente. I think if you start looking around the board and the edges in Q games, you'll see that Many Q games are won and lost in the end game, and there's often big swings where people can make dozens of points mistake following each other along. You know, like I said, I see in Q games, especially in the like 10 to 15 Q, where moves like this will be answered by an opponent, which is really absurd. So if you can take just a minute, don't answer everything in the end game, especially if it's small. That would only be, you know, one point in Gote protecting then you'll probably have more success in your games. All right, thank you.